Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So let us start this lecture with a thought process that question can never be silly, it can be a beautiful lily in the garden of knowledge that is a truth as after age. In the last lecture we basically looked at uh, the laminar premix flame and uh, by discussing about the Bunsen burner and how the mixing takes place and uh, how the flame is stabilized. right? And today we will be dabbling with uh, the same premix flame. Let us look at a LPG air Bunsen flame photograph, which looks to be a very sharp image here. And uh, if you consider this flame, right, is it the whole flame is what that uh, let us look at it. See, is it the entire this thing as a flame? You consider if you take this is the uh, image that if I take a cross section of this, right? If I take a cross section of this, right? What will be the flame shape? Will it be entire like this? It is this will be my flame, this will not be my flame, right. The my flame would be this portion will be my flame, right. The other person is hollow, there will not be anything, you know. That means, in the thin region, this is not a flame. I am talking about this cross section, right. So, therefore, flame is a very flame occurs in a very thin region in which the rapid exothermic reaction takes place. So, if you look at in this thin region, right, region the rapid exothermic reaction takes place and what we call it as a flame. Are you getting point? So, this you can call it basically dark zone, this hollow region and this is of course, the light zone, right. That you should keep in mind and of course, in this figure it is taken in such a that this is the very, this region is the flame, which is very, very sharp, but whereas the, the blue color is here, right. And question might be arises, you know, why this blue color coming in the center also, this portion, this portion, why? Because you are taking image from the front, so therefore, the flame is there also, right, because you cannot avoid it. So, that is coming, whereas if you take this edges, that is basically the flame, flame is this, this annular region, this annular region is the flame, the inside nothing will be there. So, the luminous zone we call uh, the light zone or the luminous zone, right. The portion of the flame in which temperature is high has several radicals to emit radiation. Why it is? Because temperature in this case will be very high temperature, this will be high temperature, right, zone. So, there will be several radicals which will be emitting the light and that we could see. See, if you look at you could see a blue color flame. Now, why blue color? color? You can also see a flame which is yellow color in nature. You can see sometimes purple color flame, right. That depends on the basically the radiation emitted by predominant radicals, right. And flame radiation, it will be something 3000 to 700 uh, angstrom kind of things. 
and however uh, you know there will be some predom uh, some color which will be predominant some zone and uh, that doesn't mean that uh, there won't be other color but those are not uh, those are being masked by that if you use a spectrometer you will find various you know spectrums uh, corresponding to the uh, uh, particular radiation band it will be there so where the chemical reaction you know takes place is basically below this luminous zone this is luminous zone like and just below that there will be chemical. So, if you look at this uh, if I say this chemical reaction will be taking place here below this this is the chemical reaction zone. And keep in mind is not that uh, it will be only happening here as I uh, as we proceed we will see that the reaction will be occurring a little thicker zone, but however the predominant reactions where the heat release will be occurring will be in a narrow zone. And what will happen above reaction uh, luminous zone? That is basically the burnt gases are cooled and diluted by the ambient air because if it is a hot gas right and if it is the because of buoyancy and also some momentum will be there but buoyancy will be there at the this thing some air will be entraining into this thing because it is open flame. So, this will be air entrainment will be occurring. So, from the ambient and there will be getting cooled down the gases hot gases and the diluted by the ambient air right in the above this. So, uh, the region where unburnt gases are heated to the critical temperature in this region right if you look at this is my flame let us say this is fuel plus air mixtures and this is my flame. So, in this, this is known as a dark zone. In this case, what is happening? That uh, the unburned mixtures are coming, right, fuel air that is getting heated, right, because of presence of flame, and flame will be giving the heat, right, due to conduction and uh, what you call convection and also the radiation, radiation will be more predominant right in this case. So, therefore, that will be preparing the mixture to attain the certain critical temperature, so that ignition can take place and that makes the flame to be self sustained even though you initiate the flame or combustion with the ignition energy. But afterwards, you just uh, you know stop this giving providing ignition, still it is being maintained. That means, this process makes the uh, flame or the combustion to be self sustained, and this dark zone plays a very important role. So, which is the zone uh, of highest temperature in the flame? Generally, the luminous zone or the just below where the reaction will be very predominant the temperature will be very high right. The color of luminous zone depends on the type of fuel air or fuel oxidizer rather I would put it as a oxidizer right because right air is one of the oxidizer and its ratio ratio means is equivalence ratio which will be uh, basically or the fuel air ratio which will be detecting the color of the flame. The lean flame generally it will be blue in color this is the lean flame. Lean means fuel lean mixture right that we call it as a lean flame. So, blue color due to what because there will be OH radical which will be more predominant and that will be giving the radiation in the uh, you know this thing. So, uh, that is why it is the blue in color.
and when you will decrease the mass flow rate of air right uh, per a fixed fuel flow rate what will happen this will be basically the fuel reach because air mass flow rate you are changing that means it is if it is a stoichiometric and there and then you are uh, decreasing the air mass flow rate what will happen naturally it will be fuel reach and if it is fuel reach you will get in yellow color flame right like this you will get this is a reach flame right and uh, that is due to the excitation of C2 star molecules right this will be so, having said this thing, what we will be interested to look at is basically the look at the structure of a one dimensional flame. See, flame looks to be very simple when you look at a photograph, but what is happening inside we need to look at it and uh, the flame zones as I told it can be broadly divided into three zones, one is preheat zone, other is reaction zone other is the recombination zone right. The flame zone where the flame is occurring is divided into three zones. So, from the if you look at uh, the one dimensional we are considering, but in the case of Bunsen burner flame is not really one dimensional it is a two dimensional you can say if you consider the uh, it is symmetric uh, along with the theta direction azimuthally. So, uh, therefore, it is true, but if I consider the one dimensional right, I will get a structure like this and uh, if you look at this is basically a temperature profile the T u this is unburned temperature and it remains same almost constant, but however, it started slowly increasing and then it goes to a peak temperature and although I have made it flat, but in some case of a particularly hydrocarbon this goes on incre asymptotically increases. This is only for the hydrocarbon air flame, but not for others. But however, this is asymptotically increases for hydrocarbon this is for hydrocarbon air flame. But for our purposes, we will be considering that it is just flat that is this is basically T f this is the flame temperature and if I consider this as a adiabatic then that is equal to adiabatic temperature, but you, right. So, it will be approx or rather adiabatic temperature considering that there is no heat loss from the flame, but in real situation there will be heat losses. So, there will be lower temperature than the adiabatic temperature ok. Now, what is happening if you look at reactants this is reactant is fuel plus oxidizer it can be air it can be any other things right. It is it both the profile will be similar ok it not same that means one can be fuel profile other can be oxidizer profile right rather I would suggest that uh, you know profile will be similar right I can say this is a basically fuel right and it will be goes on and then it decreases and it remains uh, in almost 0 it is 0 at the recombination zone. And the heat release is occurring here in this region and there will be intermediate reactions which will be occurring in this regions. Keep in mind that this is the zone which is very important this is known as reaction zone and this reaction zone will be heating up this preheat zone therefore, we call it as a preheat zone and the recombination where there might be some of the products which will be going on like you know going on and then it is. So, if you look at this is uh, you can broadly divide into four zones like preheat zone, reaction zone, recombination, recombination some, re, some heat being released here also in actual situation, but for our analysis case we will be talking about only 3 zones ok keep in mind that. 
and there will be zone where there will not be any rise in the temperature. So, uh, if you look at the human life also divided into pro four regions or the zones, you can say uh, the human uh, particularly according to uh, our Indian um, what you call scriptures, the life is divided into four parts, one is the brahmachari, other is the Grahastha and other one is Banapastha and Sannyas. So, it is similar to that. That means, in the Brahmacharya what you do? You depend on the society or your father, mother will be empowering you to contribute. That means, you will be preheating zone, right? The preheating zone corresponding to your Brahmacharya. You are not earning anything, you are not contributing anything, you are just you know taking and then empowering yourself. Then afterwards in the reaction zone that is the grass zone where you will have to use your energy and a lot of uh, things you will be doing contributing. And in the Barnabas zone you will be little slowed down and you will be uh, still activities will be going on, but you will be not really very much uh, productive or something. But in the sunna zone you will say look good enough. I will only talk about the God and other things. Okay. So, beautifully the uh, Indian way of life being defined and it is the similar to the flame. Are you getting? Are you getting my point? This is a very important point I am saying. So, uh, therefore, we need to follow those reasons to contribute for the society not for ourselves. So, so also the flame, flame is always the fuel oxidizer get burnt and give the heat to the others. Right? So, preheat zone if you look at there is an interesting thing that negligibly heat release, there will be some heat release, you know heat release if you look at consider here this portion right, this is this heat release is this is basically heat release right. Is approximately equal to 0 as compared to the heat release this portion. This is very high large amount. So, if you look at the this region you know if I consider this are the region where heat will be released it will be very high and it is occurring in a very thin region. Keep in mind that this I have <coughs> exaggerated this portion if you look at I have exaggerated this is the reaction zone, but in in real situation it will be order of maybe less than 1 mm right and this will be much larger but i have exaggerated just to make the point clear to you so the reaction zone in this case what is happening like uh, in the preheat zone certain chemical reaction uh, actually take place in this zone it can be several reactions uh, i mean certain things which is Initial, initial uh, phase, but however, the heat release will be very, very small, and most of the things like pyrolysis and other things occurs in this zone. That means, and some may be uh, exothermic reaction will be taking place in this region, but generally, the fuel get pyrolyzed. Pyrolyzed means endothermic reactions, right? Some heat will be coming, and the hydrocarbon, higher hydrocarbon converted into the lower hydrocarbons and other. Uh, uh, molecules which can be consumed. And the reaction zone most of the chemical energy is released in the form of heat in this due to the chemical reactions. Keep in mind that several reactions will be occurring as I had told earlier that for a methane systems which is a very simple hydrocarbon where something order of 100 reactions takes place right. Are you getting it is in this thin region there will be some 100 reactions will be taking place right involving may be 20 species right and which is quite complex in nature and decomposition of fuel takes place leading to intermediate radicals uh, uh, formations will be taking place and reactions are very thin as compared to preheat zone I have already talked about it. And temperature gradient see if you look at gradient is very high here in this reaction zone and so also the concentration gradient. Right, this is basically reactant is the concentration gradient will be very high. So, recombination zone and carbon dioxide and water are formed particularly in the recombination zone 
and uh, of course later on uh, there won't be much things will be taking place rather the heat losses will be more uh, at the uh, you know recombination zone and other zones so uh, and negligible or the zero heat release occurs in this recombination zone right there will be a little bit but that is negligible as compared to the reaction zone so when you talk about we talk about basically comparatively right now we will be uh, trying to analyze this uh, laminar uh, flame right considering the thermal theory and uh, there are there are several theories are there and uh, this is uh, basically um, we will be considering the simpler one <coughs> and we will be making a certain assumptions right for ex uh, before making some assumptions let us look at this is my uh, let us say fuel air mixture filled in this tube and we are just igniting it. right what will happen there will be flame kernel will be taking place and it will be taking a save and then it will be moving right moving towards the unburnt this is unburnt fuel air mixture with a certain velocity that we call it as a burning velocity sl the sl is the movement of the combustion wave this is a combustion wave what we call it is a flame in you know in current situation and uh, this will be moving with respect to unburned mixtures and this velocity is defined as a speed with which combustion wave will be moving with respect to unburned mixtures right now this is a propagation of the flame but as I told earlier what we will do we will supply this fuel air unburned mixture right fuel plus air or fuel or oxidizer I need not to confine to air only oxidizer mixture with certain velocity such that the it will be equal to the SL so that my flame will be stabilized here somewhere right. So, if I look at that means my flame I am considering this as a one dimensional flame 1 D flame right and keep in mind that fuel air is supplying fuel air plus air is supplying at certain velocity which is equal to the SL. So, that my this is fixed. So, I am considering this as my x in the fixed coordinate system now the flame is fixed is not moving because I am putting this. Uh, reference frame with the flame right basically we can put that way and then it is fixed. So, with this this and then this side what I will be considering is a far away it is infinity and this is minus infinity right are you getting and this is we are considering one dimensional flame. So, with this uh, what we will be doing we will making some assumptions. So, assumptions are we are considering one dimensional steady inviscid laminar flow. The flow is laminar and it is steady, there is no viscous effect, right. Hypothetically, we are considering, but I can have established a flame which is just lifted one dimensional flame, like which is stabilized in a burner. I will see. Uh, uh, I will show you a burner one dimensional burner by which you can really establish that in the lab. I had done that uh, maybe 25 years back myself. So, <coughs> uh, of course, it is quite difficult to uh, design that and develop. So, uh, flame is quite thin right that we are considering and uh, the ignition temperature is close to the flame temperature that means in this case what we are considering T ignition is approximately equal to T f or very close there is not much difference you can say. 
and uh, the no heat loss including radiation, but in actual flame radiation you cannot avoid because flame temperature is very high and ideal gas law can be valid and a single step chemistry model will be using as I told the in the flame there will be several reactions will be taking place you know involving several kinds of species even for simple hydrocarbon for methane air. Binary diffusion and uh, four years and fixed loss like you know are valid we are considering binary diffusion because fuel and oxidizer only right. And, uh, the unity Lewis number uh, will be using it. So, constant transport properties we are considering, we will be considering constant properties and with uh, these are the assumption we will be considering, but with this uh, we will stop over and we will discuss in the next lecture uh, and also trying to derive a relationship for burning velocity in the next lecture. Thank you very much.